In this lesson, we're going to be talking about volatile system information. As you're doing an investigation, sometimes you'll run across a system that's actually up and running and is actively in use. There's information on that system that you may actually want to capture before shutting it down, because when you shut it down, all of the information goes away. And that's volatile system information or just volatile information. So I'm going to show you some different tools to look at some of this. And the information that's volatile is things like logon sessions, for example. And I'm going to bring up a command prompt here. And I'm just going to go into the directory where I happen to have these tools. Now, the first one I want to look at is logon sessions. So these are the logon sessions that are on this particular system right now. And these are all of the users and processes that are logged on currently. And you can see the username here for different services and the logon type and the SID, the session, the logon time, all sorts of information about the different logons or users or services. This information goes away when you shut the system down, obviously, because those processes are no longer logged on and it's not actually stored anywhere unless you have some extensive logging turned on, in which case you may be able to find it through the logs. But you can't always guarantee that the log information is going to have things like whether something is actually logged on at a given point or whether an application may have crashed and no longer been logged on. So log on sessions is one type of volatile information. You want to look at the users and services that are logged in at any given point. Now, another thing that you want to look at is the processes. So I want to see the processes that are running at any given time on a system when I've got access to it. So right here, we've got a look at all of the processes that are currently running, not only the processes themselves, but all of the threads as well. And I can get a lot of information about these processes. I can bring up the properties here and it will show me the strings that are part of this job. So these are all of the ASCII strings or the human readable strings that are stored in this processes memory table. And the top ones here probably aren't actually strings. They just look like strings because they've got ASCII characters and they're null terminated. So they look like strings, although they probably aren't. If we scroll all the way down though, you'll see some things that actually are human readable and are real strings that are found. And since what I've got here is a Postgres database application or program process, what I may be able to find here is some data that's either being stored or retrieved as part of this database service. So that's memory, virtual memory or system memory that is being used by a process. And we can get that through this utility called Process Explorer. By the way, the tools that I'm using so far and will continue to use here are from the Windows Sys Internals team at Microsoft. And you can see in the title bar, you can get to them from www.sysinternals.com. There's a lot of really useful tools for looking at system information. So that was the Process Explorer. And I can also bring up the Process Monitor here and get a more detailed look at what the processes are doing. So right here are all of the system calls that the processes are engaged in, and you can see success or failure. And I can do things like look at the stack, which again has some information in it, which may have actual string data, and there's actually nothing here, but you may be able to find information about, I don't know, for example, a web page that a particular application is going to. So I can look up all sorts of information right here. I've got the properties and that brings up the process and you can see all of the DLLs that are involved with this particular process. So you can see 
what's going on here. And on this other tab, we've got the snack, and that's available as well through this event properties. And you can see here, I can actually do a save. So I could save what I see in the stack into a comma separated value file. And I would have that permanently, regardless of whether the application closed and all of this was gone, this is how I could store that information. So that's the process monitor. Now, I may also want to look at virtual memory. And there's another tool here. I scroll down, I can find it to VM map. Now, VM map will show me all of the virtual memory that's associated with a particular process. So I can scroll through the process table here, pick one. Let's see what we've got here that may be interesting. Well, so here's Internet Explorer. So we can take a look at that. And I am looking at Internet Explorer now. I can select the heap here. And then if I go to view, I can select strings. And I can see the strings that are part of the heap, which would be dynamic memory. That's what's stored in the heap. So any dynamic memory would be located in the heap. I can also look at the stack and I can view strings from the stack. And you can see all of this here. We've got a page that was visited by this particular instance of Internet Explorer. You can see that Internet Explorer went to the MSN website. And there's another one here was also visited the MSN website. So here are the strings that are associated with the virtual memory or all of the memory basically for this particular application. So with VM map, I can look at individual processes and I can look at the memory that's attached to it. Right here, I've got the image portion of the memory, which is really the executable code. That would be the image. And I've got a number of other sections here, like private data, which would be things that were used specifically by this application. And you can see there's actually no printable strings in the private data. I've also got the page table, which is memory that has been written out to disk, that has been paged out to disk. And I can't actually see the strings there because there aren't any. So that's the virtual memory and the virtual memory map. I can also take a look at network utilization. If I go to TCP view, this is also volatile system information. I want to be able to see all of the network sockets that are open or the network communications that are open between my system and other systems. And you can see here, there are a number of communications that are open. And honestly, this is more or less like Netstat, which is a command line utility. And Netstat exists in both Windows and Linux. So this is just like Netstat. The difference is that this is graphical. And so I could do things like reorganize it easily. I can sort on ports and addresses. So if I sorted on remote address and at the moment, I'm not actually don't appear to be connected to anything other than myself. Although there are some services that appear to be listening. So right now, this is the list of processes. And this is also something that is a little bit harder to get with Netstat is not only the process, but the thread as well. And you can see there's a couple of different threads with the same PID, two different protocols. And so I've got this service host listening on TCP and TCPv6, so IPv6 and IPv4. And you can see that it's listening here on the EP map local port. So I have not only got all of my listeners here, but I have also got the process on the left hand side of this table that's associated with that particular listener. And I can bring up property processes 
and you can see where this process is located. I could end the process if I wanted to. If I saw some communication that was going on in this TCP view, I could kill the process and stop that communication from happening. So TCP communications or network communications is another piece of valuable, volatile information that you may want to look at and potentially capture as you're investigating a live system. So live systems are definitely things that you may run across from time to time. There is information that you probably want to look at and see before you actually shut the system down. And as I said, the, the sysinternals tools can be really good for doing that. And if you just keep these on a flash drive, carrying them around with you, you can get access to them and ensure that they're not corrupted by anything that's going on on the system because you've got clean copies on your USB stick. If you don't happen to have quick access to a forensic toolkit that can easily grab this information and you don't have something that's portable in that sense, this is something that you can use. Just have a, a USB stick with these sysinternals tools on them and you can get some good forensic information from the system with just these tools.